Hello, this is simply about networking protocols and today I'll tell you about VRF, Virtual Routing Forwarding. In this video I'll tell you about what is VRF, general VRF operations, let's call it holes and walls, and VRF usage. So, we have a topology with multiple devices connected to each other, important L3 topology with multiple devices uh, that have multiple L3 interfaces connected to some different subnets, then this device transmits traffic between all the networks it connects to uh, or its nodes in its uh, routing table. Sometimes for any reason administrator doesn't like it. And eventually we can configure some manual rules of uh, accessibility to the networks and so on and so forth, but then we are losing flexibility of the uh, dynamic routing. Yeah? Then, for this particular reason, VRF was introduced. VRF, it's a slice of our device that groups L3 interfaces uh, that could transmit traffic between. Um, you can find this schema pretty similar, uh, pretty familiar, because it's similar to what uh, uh, what you see in VLAN video. And yes, schematically this is pretty the same, only VLAN works with ports and VRF works with L3 interfaces, it means interfaces that have IP address configured on. So, VRF groups L3 interfaces uh, through which traffic can run. And this is implemented by schematically having a routing table uh, separately for each VRF. Physically, how it can be implemented depends on the vendor, but schematically uh, each VRF has its own routing table. Then this routing table knows only about interfaces, L3 interfaces that are part of this VRF, has only routes that can uh, pass those VRF as next hops, and this is how isolation is done. So we have a packet frame, we have a frame that needs to pass some uh, our device through some VRF. System detects it, uh, sends to this slice schematically sends it to this slice for processing. There are in this uh, routing table that belongs to the VRF, we are checking for information, we are checking for information in RP table, finding next hops and if, if everything is configured correctly. Packet is sent to the next hop, successfully routed. Everything is similar to the regular routing, as you remember from routing video, no changes. And since a uh, routing table in some VRF doesn't know nothing about interfaces in other VRF and routes, so this is how isolation is done and traffic cannot pass uh, between VRFs, but as usually, uh, once we implemented, perfectly designed, and investigated, and defined protocol with defined use cases, and we have VRFs with unbreakable walls between them, immediately we need holes in those walls, because this is how real life works, and this is how most system works. So in reality, all vendors that I saw implementation VRF on have mechanism to configure uh, routing when root is on one VRF and next hop is on other VRF. Uh, well, usually it's by defining routes to those next hops, to the interfaces that are connected to the next hops. Uh, but mechanism can can differ because some uh, some vendors can provide routes between VRFs and so on. So carefully read documentation from your vendors. 
Well, as I mentioned before, uh, we have a packet that needs to be protected by on some VRF. And this is perfectly works for MPLS because for MPLS we have a mechanism of router distinguisher, router target. Uh, we have uh, fields in the frame that can be used to distinguish which VRF we need to process it. But we are not talking about MPLS at all. No, no, no. It's mess right now. We are talking about regular Ethernet and L3 Ethernet. Uh, and in regular IP packet, there is no field for for specifying VRF uh, for specifying VRF. So how system distinguish on which VRF packet needs to be processed? Good question. System distinguishes by ingress L3 interface through which L3 interface packet gets to the system. Then this packet needs to be processed on VRF where this L3 interface configured on. Again, reminder, one L3 interface can be part of only one VRF. If packet enters our system through another L3 interface, it will be processed on the VRF where this L3 interface configured on. But what with traffic that is generated by the system itself? It's like some control traffic, traffic for uh, dynamic protocols and so on and so forth. In this case, again, all vendors that uh, I saw implementation VRF on, but you need carefully read documentation from your vendors for specifics. Most vendors, defining so-called management VRF. And then system knows that this management VRF is used uh, to operate with internally generated traffic for uh, dynamic protocols, uh, L3, L2, whatever, and so on and so forth. Control traffic runs through management VRF. But what if user trying to perform actions that require L3 traffic generation. For example, user trying to ping device with IP 10, 10, 10, 10. On our system, we have L3 interface in the same subnet. And if this is only one interface, system could look through interfaces, find it single one and operate with this VRF. But the, the main idea of the VRF that we can have interfaces in same subnet but in different VRF for traffic isolation. And then system cannot make a decision. Then probably you already met it, probably not. User have to specify VRF as interface in the command or operation that will generate the traffic. For example, in case of pink, on Linux, a user specifies VRF green as an interface to use, and then system understand that L3 traffic for this pink operation needs to be processed on the green VRF. That simple. Thank you. Have a great day.